Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back to another episode. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about, you already know, as you saw it in the title, we're going to be talking about, well, all the things that are going on in the world, mainly between the US and Mexico. I know, this video is not necessarily the kind of topic that you might be expecting on this channel, but the reality is that it's a very important topic going forward, no matter what you think. And we're going to try and keep it as much in the middle as possible because I mean that's kind of like where I, I uh, sit with this whole situation but regardless there's a lot of things that we got to talk about and uh, without further ado let's get to talking all right talking and riding right riding and talking you already know all right so let's get started so basically now that it's official, because it's already official. Let's wait for some traffic. Anyways, now that it's official, we can talk about it. But, you know, Mr. Joe Biden is the president. He is the brand new president of uh, the United States of America. And so, you know, with that being said, a lot of changes are coming, not just for the US, but for its neighbors. And so, in case you guys aren't aware, I'm in Mexico. So we're gonna be talking about how, you know, this is gonna be affecting Mexico going forward. And uh, we've already seen some effects. Um, not quite sure when you're gonna see this video, but the inauguration of Mr. Joe Biden was yesterday. So, you know, already there's already changes coming. You know, um, one of the main changes that we are seeing right off the bat, which is kind of like what's making me do this video, is the fact that now all of a sudden, you know, we are seeing uh, the relationship between Mr. Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, or as they like to call him out here, AMLO, so the relationship between him and Biden is not so bueno, not so good, man. So despite what you might think of Orange Man, Trump, whatever you want to call him, you know, 45, whatever, um, at the end of the day, he had an amazing relationship with AMLO, an amazing relationship with Mexico. Despite the propaganda, despite the rhetoric, despite a lot of the things that you might be hearing out there, the facts are the facts, and um, they both got along great. Now again, this has nothing to do with how regular people see the presidents of both countries or how our, you know, how other people, you know, see this or, you know, what side of the political spectrum you're on or anything like that. We're not talking about any of that, all right, at all. And again, you want to talk more about that? We'll talk about it on the other channel, but you already know what I think. All this is just WWF wrestling. I digress. The relationship between Trump and Mr. AMLO, the current president of Mexico, which by the way has four years left on his term, so about the same amount of years as uh, Biden. Um, anyways, they got along great. They really, really did get along great because they were both very similar presidents. And so why am I starting off with that? Well, because ever since the beginning of, uh, you know, ever since that, um, the elections in the US were over, from that moment going forward, we already started to see um, tensions between both Mexico and the US. Um, Mexico was not very happy, you know, was not very happy with the way that the election turned out. And um, when, when basically all other presidents and leaders from around the world were calling Biden and congratulating him and all that stuff, Hamlo was not. In fact, I'm pretty sure he just only recently did that because, well, Biden got inaugurated and Trump stepped down. He didn't have much of a choice, like all of us <laughs> at this point. Anyways, again, keep it on topic here. So, with what I was just saying right there, all right, let me see, let me make sure I don't get, okay. Traffic. You already know the traffic out here. But anyways, I digress. 
you know, going back to what I was saying, you know, um, right off the bat, you know, the relationship has already been rocky. And um, as of right now, the relationship is very rocky. And let's get into some details as to why. Well, again, if the Mexican president got along really great with Trump, well, you know, it's going to be pretty obvious that he's not going to get along with Biden. And sure enough, you know what I mean? As soon as that happened, you know, here we are. So that's a uh, obvious topic there, obvious reason, number one. Number two, um, you know, let's just talk about the the virus situation for a second. Again, you know, what AMLO has been saying recently, well, not recently, it's been a few months now, it's been a while now, but AMLO, the Mexican president, has been saying that lockdowns are anti-constitutional, that lockdowns are inhumane, that lockdowns, you know, whatever. He's very anti-lockdown. Same thing as the mask. Very anti-mask. And as you know, this has whole turned into a giant political thing instead of a health thing. Even though we should be talking about health, no one's talking about health. That's another topic for another day and another channel. Uh, yeah, another topic. Anyways, the point I'm making is that now all of a sudden, you know, they're definitely butting heads. Um, as Trump and others around the world are getting super censored, AMLO has been, you know, the Mexican president has been saying that we cannot stand for that, especially countries that do have freedom, that they should not stand for any kind of censorship or any kind of infringement on any of your constitutional rights. So just a quick one for most of you, for some of you guys that don't know, you know, Mexico and the US have the same exact constitution. In fact, copy paste. You, you could even say it's the Bitcoin cash of, uh, of uh, constitutions or the Litecoin. All right, whatever. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to fucking hurt. <laughs> You know, hope we can bring the conversation to a stop with some uh, obscure reference there. No, but the reality is, is that it is a photocopy, an exact copy of uh, the American Constitution. There's only a few differences here and there. Um, again, when it comes to like amendments and, uh, you know, many other uh, things. But the reality is, is that uh, it's just pretty much exactly the same. Okay. We're not gonna, that's not what we're gonna talk about here today, but we, we will be talking about that in future episodes because I know it's important to a lot of you guys that watch these videos. But again, I digress. Let's get back to what I was saying. He understands that there's a lot of countries around the world that have a similar constitution, not as similar as um, Mexico to the US, but there's a lot, you know, some have better, you know, constitutions, bill of rights, whatever. It's not the point. The point is <clears throat> that in a lot of these, um, we have, you know, our inali inalienable rights um, of freedom and liberty um, cannot be infringed upon, and they have been infringed upon in many, many, many ways that, again, we're not discussing on this channel. Um, that's what we talk about on the other channel. And again, to each their own, um, as you guys already know, my number one reason for living here, oh, again, yeah, oh, whatever, you'll find out, whatever. Anyways, freedom and liberty, guys. Again, I know I've said it many times, but I'm gonna say it again. It's freedom and liberty. Okay, so back to what I was saying. So with that being said, um, you know, Mexico is one of the only, if not, well, they're a major power like it or not that's another thing too not only have i been talking about for a long time that mexico is a major power and they're only going to get more powerful and growing and all these positive amazing things not only have i been talking about that but recently i've been watching and uh, doing more research and homework on my country where i live now where i am i spend most of my time and um man guess what Mexico, even now, by the numbers, again, no one talks about it, no one talks about it, but by the numbers, Mexico's already stronger and more powerful than its other neighbors, which are always, most, most of the time, considered stronger and powerful, AKA Argentina, AKA um, Venezuela in this case. And did I go wrong? 
think it went the wrong way. Yeah, it did go the wrong way. Alright, hold on. Damn. I was gonna get it right one of these days. I think yeah, it's 47. I thought it, I thought it, I thought it turned out 47. This is 47. Hmm. Oh, it's 49. Yeah, I'm spacing out, man. <laughs> Alright, sorry guys. You know. Ugh. Sorry. So anyways, back to what I was saying. You know, um, a lot of people are always putting out there like how Brazil is stronger. How um, other countries, you know, like Argentina, what a more powerful economy and all this just shit. And, you know, in, in some cases and in the past that was true. But again, from a lot of the research I've been doing, Mexico's already there. Mexico's already number one. In fact, as I've talked about many times before, now there's hard proof, you know, as the U.S. continues to fall, Mexico is growing. And uh, some of you guys have noticed, some of you guys haven't. You know, for example, um, like a lot of American companies that have gone bankrupt or disappeared in the U.S., they're alive and well out here. A lot of Mexican corporations that you've never heard of are now all of a sudden, you know, going and uh, seeping into the American, uh, uh, the American uh, economy. And I can go on and on. You know, um, when it comes to numbers, you know, there's over, this is just, just Mexicans, guys, by the way, just Mexicans. This is not including people like me, which is, uh, I'm Cuban, and um, literally every other Hispanic group that lives in the U.S. But just Mexicans, there's around 55 million in the U.S. Plus the history. The history, guys. Again, do I need to remind you guys of the history between both of these countries? So, there's a lot to digest there. But just simply on the fact that there's 55 million by again there's many estimates here official estimates there's 33 million or 35 million mexicans in the u.s but that's only the ones that are legally counted if you're going to add the illegal illegals that's again you add at least another 15 to 20 million so that's where we get to that 55 and again whatever even at 35 is a lot and i think obviously we know there's a lot more because you already know especially if you're hispanic again i digress okay but as the world turns, as I've said many times, and um, again, it's already happening, and we have more, more and more proof every day, you know, Mexico is growing and growing. A lot of people consider or still or think that Mexico is a third world country when it isn't. It is not. Because if you're going to, again, and I'm not going to get into like the whole, um, you know, uh, reason for having first world countries, second world countries, where all that came from in the second world war. Again, that's all from my other channel. You can, uh, you know, hey, how's it going, guys? <laughs> um, that's from my other channel, but basically, you know, on uh, I forgot what I was saying. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Saying hi to my my friends, my neighbors. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, yeah, about uh, the first world, third world countries. You know, again, if you're gonna just define it by what it says in the in the books as to what a first and third world country is, you know. The U.S. is actually a lot closer to third world country status than Mexico. And Mexico is a lot closer to first world country status than the U.S. And this is the fact. Again, you know, I know we can talk about this back and forth, but, you know, it is what it is. You know, most of you guys that are watching this channel um, already know this. Or have an idea or an inclination of uh, the truth behind this fact. You know? So. Let's continue. So. You know, on with... All right, I'm trying to figure out the best route. I think I'm going to cut through here. So, yeah, there's too much traffic over there, so let's just cut through here. But anyways, so yeah, guys, you know, like at the end of the day, man, you know, there's a lot of changes coming. So I know a lot of you guys are watching this, you know, video today. It was like, I, I, as I said in the early in the video, of all the changes that are coming, well, the changes are already here. You know what I mean? Right off the bat, as a U.S. citizen, you need to have a a COVID uh, negative test or something like that. You got to take a, a test, the COVID test, and you got to come out negative before you're allowed back in the U.S. So that's happening. All right. Let's not forget that. All right. I got to cut over that way. I got to go that way. What's the best way for me to do this? There's a lot of traffic. See, traffic is already starting to... To, to show up so again just like in a lot of countries around the world right now as to where 
Right, I think I'm just gonna gun it. So just like in a lot of countries out there, as things are closing down and getting worse and getting more difficult, for you out there, um, things are actually opening up here and getting better, you know, all around for the citizenship. You know, so, you know, right now where I live, and I go, every part of Mexico is a little different. All the states, all the states are different. Regions are different. I know some places are going into a little bit of a lockdown and closing down, but that's not, that's not the, that's not also that's also coming with a lot of protests and a lot of people pushing back. But anyways, I digress. Here in in this part of the of the of Mexico, it is uh, some of the most um, they had some of the most uh, strict rules, regulations, and laws, and everything coming through with the virus. And uh, yeah, basically everything's already out the window. Everything's already done. They're already done. So yeah, everyone that you see. No matter who it is, everyone you see out here wearing a mask is voluntary and they want to wear it and, and that's it, there's nothing wrong with that, there's nothing wrong with that at all, you know, you do you, you know what I mean, whatever makes you happy, right? If you think you're saving the world, good for you, you know what I mean, like, uh, if you're, whatever it is, man, I'm not going to get into that now, again, I digress. So, as I was saying, alright, let's do it, as I was saying, um... You know, there's already a lot of major changes. You know, again, you know, let, let's just go over them. Uh, a few things. AMLO is anti-censorship. Um, he even said we need, as a country, again, I'm not, you know, this is not something I approve of, but whatever, at least it's uh, an idea, and it's, at least it's heading in the right direction, but whatever, you know, kind of, sort of, whatever. By the way, Mexico's very young. Average age out here is 30-something, and uh, very crypto-tech-friendly. But again, that's another episode for another day. We'll talk about that later, but on another episode, <laughs> another day. But um, but yeah, well, like I was saying, uh, you know, he's anti-censorship. He even said we should build our own um, social media platform, our own platform, you know, and things like that, in order to, um, you know, literally combat this and not allow this to 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 happen to us, and for us to take control and have a. And again, if this is going to be a public square, public forum, then, well, we, the government, should be the ones that provide it and allow the public uh, forum and square to, to do what it was meant to be and um, protect uh, the constitutional civil rights of everybody while at the same time allowing, allowing capitalism to take shape and form and have others um, create their own private platforms that could or, not, or could or could not allow you know, people, again, they, you know, will or will not allow people to do and say whatever. Again, that's how it's supposed to fucking be. You know what I mean? But anyways, again, I digress. You know, so they're doing that. You know, they're doing something like that. That's the idea. Again, he's very, very anti-central bank. Um, again, a lot of people here hate on him, you know, because of that, you know, but I think it's like, why would you hate him for that? That is like, the, if there's only one reason you would love him, it would be because of that. You know, the fact that he is not taking bribes and taking money and taking debt from the central banks when he doesn't have to, all that does is impoverish, impoverish and make everyone poorer. You know, in case I didn't say it right the first time, but all that does is make everybody poorer, you know what I mean? So that the central banks have more power and the country has less power. So no, you know I mean, him, him basically saying no to the IMF and no to all these central banks is another amazing, amazing thing that he's doing and going in the right direction. Again, you know, to me, I don't care, you know what I mean? I don't have any horse in the race. I'm just, I live out here and it is what it is, but you already know I'm not, a poli uh, I'm not into politics. I'm not into any of this stuff. I'm just telling you, you know, how it is and what it is and all that good stuff. And then you guys can figure it out. You know what I mean? Hello? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, just uh, talking about how Amlo's anti- All right, later, man. <laughs> Look at that. I'm so loud, the guy can hear me. The Uber driver can hear me. All right, I'm going to wait for all the traffic to swing by here. Um... But yeah, man, you know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, man, you know, it doesn't matter what you think. A lot of the people out here, they're very aware and fully aware and self-aware of the situation. You know what I mean? Especially when it comes to the banks. Ah. <laughs> Sorry. I missed the pedal. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, just threw myself into traffic. Anyway, all right, all right, let's get back on topic. But yeah, you know what I mean? Most people out here in this country, hold on, let me make sure I'm still recording. Anyways, so bright out. Okay, yeah, but anyways, most people out here are very, very, very self-aware and very 
you know, in tune with what's going on. We, we, I'm, I mean, I think in the future, I have an episode talking about, you know, Bitcoin banks and uh, gold, silver, um, how it's dealt with out here. Yeah, I think it's gonna be in the future. We're probably gonna watch this one first. But yeah, long story short, man. You know, it's very, oh look. Let's check this out real quick. For any one of you guys that have been watching for a long time, look at that. Holy guacamole. Look at that. Wow. Man. You guys, I mean, some of you guys remember what this used to be. You guys saw them build this whole thing. Um, it's been a year, literally. Yeah, I'm, I'm, this is, I used to live down the, brand, the red house you're going to see in a second. For the new viewers, I used to live in that red house over there you're going to see in a second. Um, and uh, for old viewers, you guys, have, you guys saw them demolish everything here, build it, and uh, look where we are now. So this is like less than a year later. Less than a year later. Wow, that's a lot of progress. Anyways, all right, let's get back to it. But yeah, guys, you know, at the end of the day, the, a lot of the people here are also very, you know, self-aware, educated on a lot of these things. So they're not going to get, you know, I used to live here I'm to the right. <laughs> Anyways, a lot of people are very, you know, self-aware. You know, a lot of people, um, especially when it comes to uh, things like that, you know, the banking situation is very different out here. And um, people, man. So with that being said, remember, knowledge is power, access is power. All these things are, are really our power. You know, more than anything else. Oh, this guy. Anyways. You always got to watch out for the fancy cars. Anyways, so, as I was saying, you know, at the end of the day, you know what I mean? Like, um, a country like Mexico, you know what I mean, is now going to start coming to, to head. You know, might start having some... Uh, some, uh, what you might call it, some difficulty, and they might start running into some, uh, you know, um, a little bit of a situation with the U.S. now, only because of the new president and uh, things like that. So, you know, a lot of the things that the new president, um, Joe Biden, is saying and doing is that he is already demanding, again, let me repeat, demanding for Mexico to go into lockdown, for Mexico you know, um, to follow his directives and orders. And Mexico's already declining and saying no. Again, you know, um, he's already told the, the IMF, AKA the International Monetary Fund and other central banks to go fuck themselves many times. He's been in power two years and it's four, it has four more years of power left. And he's already told them no. He has strengthened, you know, um, internally, the Mexican banking system, you know, and uh, the Mexican uh, system and gotten away from the interna International Monetary Fund. So th that's happening. Um, again, right now, Mexico is the odd man out. You know, Mexico is now going up against, you know, um, the other countries of the world, you know, like the US, you know, other European countries, um, a, a lot of the central bank run world. You know, you can call them the NWO, you can call them the, the, the globalist, you can call them whatever you want to call them, but there are two factions of uh, people in power in the world right now, which is the A, the nationalist, like Trump, AMLO, Bolsonaro in Brazil, um, and that can go on and on. You know, we got those, and then we have, um, you know, all the other globalist, nationalist, I mean, globalist, uh, NWO type presidents, which are, you know, Joe Biden, you know, the Canadian President Trudeau, um, and, uh, you know, a lot of the ones in the European countries, and that can go on and on, you know, whether it's a guy in the UK or Germany, um, but anyway, I digress. So we're starting to see a hu another huge shift coming our way, and that can go on and on, literally. I've talked about it many, many times on this channel, um, but now it's... You know, I felt that I had to make this episode because for a lot of people around the world, there's going to be major changes coming for you. You know what I mean? Um, and, and especially if you're from the U.S. and from Mexico, it's going to be a lot of changes, man. And I think Mexico is going to be able to, you know, come out positive. Look at that. Look at this. Look at this. Capitalism. Pure capitalism. Pure capitalism all over the place. Anyways, like I said, I think Mexico at the end of the day is going to come out way ahead here. And in about a decade, right in front of your eyes, you're going to see Mexico become 
very, very powerful, very first world, very, in fact, the most powerful country in the Americas. And you're gonna see the US fall to God knows what, I don't know, 13th place in just the Americas, you know, God knows the world. But yeah, guys, you know what I mean? A lot of changes are coming. And with that, you know, again, a lot of you guys that are coming out here to live out here, to, to migrate out here, you know, there's a lot of changes coming in many different forms. And uh, now, I think things are gonna be a little different. Look, last thing I'm gonna say is that one of the major changes was the fact that, um, one of the major changes that was already coming this way that we were experiencing was the fact that, um, you know, again, you know, just from on the US alone, the liberal to conservative, you know, the conservative, to liberal whatever so you know basically <clears throat> under trump a lot of liberals were coming out to mexico um again both liberals and conservatives and people in the middle are coming everyone's coming but what i'm saying is that during trump more liberals were coming out here now under biden it's probably going to be a lot more conservatives coming out here especially conservatives you know most of them again i don't want to speak for all you guys out there but a lot of conservatives are in the you know baby boomer um, older age group and um, a lot of you guys have been working your whole fucking life and dedicating your whole life to this country and now to have it all being taken away from you um, yeah a lot of you guys are just escaping and leaving now which again is the same old shit that happens all the time we talk about this all the time history same as it ever was yada 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 so <laughs> with that being said oh, I think I'm going the wrong way again am I? I don't even know anymore I gotta I, see I gotta find the address I don't even know where I am <laughs> <laughs> anyways I digress I think I gotta turn around and make a U-turn here real quick so anyways yeah I'm definitely long streets okay so I think I'm gonna end it here guys it's been a very long episode let me see in fact how long has it been already wow very long okay but it's a goodie it's a good one I wanted to make this and talk about it and there's just so much to talk about here so much but all I'm saying is that a big Big change is coming, guys. And um, get ready. Just get ready. I think it's the other way. Man, where's, uh, why am I so lost all of a sudden? I used to live in this freaking neighborhood. I think it's the other one, okay. So, all right, all right. <laughs> yeah, 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 sorry guys. You know, I know you guys love this kind of content just hanging out here, we haven't been here in a while. But anyways, yeah, it's the next street, I hope. All right, guys, so you already know the deal. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to please like, please subscribe, please share, please hit that bell icon. But more importantly than anything else, please stay awesome and stay informed, all right? And uh, thanks for watching, guys, seriously. You know what I mean? If you like this kind of content, you already know what to do, all right? Check out the rest of the ecosystem. JoseAtiaga.com. All right, I'm out of here, guys. I really got to find I'm definitely going the wrong way. I'm not even fucking high yet. Laters. Bye.